Welcome back everybody. And today, due to popular demand, we have another example brand video. If you watch the previous two that have been put on the channel, you'll understand that we are working with underneath the assumption that the warrior curve or the Chinese curve, the curve to stay on one until seven gold, then double level to three, is the best way to play brand. In other words, you stay on one, buy battle cries, pull battle cries, and especially token units such as Alley Cat and Murloc Tidehunter, take multiple triples, pull those and don't redeem them, basically holding them in your hand, take a little bit of damage in the meantime, double level from one to three, go to four, shoot for five stars, potentially shoot for six stars, depending on your state in the game. The assumption here is that by taking early losses and reliably taking five stars, you leave yourself enough time to stabilize. And in the speed of this current meta, we're all very, very, very often able to stabilize a game on turn seven, eight, nine. And by the time you get to turns 10 and 11, you're already competing for top four, let alone some of these games are over by turn 12. So you power spike on relevant turns, take the triples that are available, use that to convert this into easy, easy MMR. Honestly, like I'm never going to go back to the other curve. Brand is so consistent on this line. All right, enjoy. But we need to practice it. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. If we get another battle cry here, then we will buy and actually play the alley cat. Otherwise, we're going to hold alley. Regardless of what, if we win or lose the next round. I've been doing this a lot recently. Playing the heroes that I need to get better at over the heroes that I know I can already play. Yeah, we're not going to take the Hyena, right? One battle cry on a token? We could buy it right now. Probably should. Can we hold? If we get a double battle cry board, then we just sell Tabby Cat to double buy battle cry and then take the tempo. Brand's wrong, I don't want to be right. Huh. Well, it's a turn three Brand. Turn three battle brand, indeed. Yeah. Dude, I wish I knew this guy so I could emote and not and just, you know, make play it off as a joke, because this is just I I'd probably quit for the day if this happened to me on turn three. Oh look at that that ghoul. Pretty cool, dude. Pretty cool. That's funny. All right. Our objective at this point is line up triples. Like I had the stream open for sure. Nah, I don't know about that. It's a pretty damn easy read. Oh, you mean your opponent has... Is Bran on one on turn three? I wonder if he bought alley cats and or tide hunters. That was a, a pretty awesome ghoul. Saved him a lot of health. He leveled up two. People are, are learning still, guys. They're learning brands still.
I fucking range two to six. But one star lives, we do two damage. But Bran lives, we do six damage. That was a little awkward. I mean, a little. We just do this, right? And if we find a, an alley cat, a geomancer, or a tide hunter, we take a triple off of it. Rock pool's just not good enough. We want to level to four and or five and take triples into fives or sixes. Kagar as well is a triple for alley cat. So there are four options that give us a triple next turn and we can take a five star. Think of that and compare that start to uh, Token Jandis. Turn six, we level to four and we take two five stars. One of them is a big brand. That gets really fucking good, right? I guess everything you want out of Bran or off of Jandis reliably on Bran. I don't want to take a million here. That's a triple. In order to take that triple, we have to break the opportunity to take other triples. Feels like a next turn thing, right? We don't get that much stronger doing it. We look for Kaggar, we look for Tidehunter, we look for Razorfin, we look for another Alley Cat. Another Alley Cat is a another triple. Alright, just in case, we'll worry about the firewall. But we don't need it for this turn. I just want to make sure it's up for just in case we need it. 12 to 17. You don't love that. Here? No? No? Sure? No? Sure? Okay, sure. 17 it is. Why not? Why not take all of the damage? Turn 6, 12 to 17 damage. Lovely. Yeah, actually. Come on, man. You gotta go. Look at the five first. Okay. It is what it is. That was pretty shitty. But we took a million. We can't we can't stabilize in any other way. We missed on every single one of our triples other than one alley cat. And we got a Pagel off of the five. Gotta say I've seen better for turn seven, but at least we have a couple premium minions. We have a brand with a Hydra. We have like a decent minion here. We can still play this game. We're just not high rolling anymore. We're just kind of mid rolling. Coin flip. Cool. Also cool. Pretty decent. Go right. We get an extra card if we want right. I 
who's a Kagar. Imagine the potential before Sag, man. Sag. No. Yep. I want the gold for later. All right. All roads lead to Tonkamp. I wouldn't consider a brand menagerie board that happens to have our Arm of the Empire on it a Tonkamp, but you know. I'd be silly not to take the value that is Arm of the Empire scaling on this board when we had double Argus in hand. Somebody uh, did not find triples because he left Tavern 1 early. We didn't find triples after we left Tavern 1 either. Which begs the question, should we have stayed on one an extra turn? He dies bloody. All of the blood gems in the pocket. Or he doesn't die at all because he's the world's best brand player. And he greeted the shit out of that knowing he'd live in 86% lethal. Never mind. He's six head, man. Tis time to go up. And imagine getting decent minions. Like, damn. Like, damn. <laughs> Imagine a strong shell right about now. Imagine a jug at any point. Oh, it'd be so good. Imagine a primal fin. Another arm of the empire. Shit, man, a five star that actually gave us stats. We passed a pagel, but if you don't buy, if you buy the pagel there, your turn's done. So with Bran on the board and multiple taunts and cleave and everything else, like any situational buff is better than than a Peggle. So we know we have one free roll and we can sell the stuff from hand. But one floating gold. We just do it that way. Sounds very greedy. I know, man. I know. I'm just a greedy kind of person. I just want decent stuff. Cool. Sun bacon? Okay. That's that's pretty cool. Sun bacon's decent. And we killed the patches. Oh yeah, bunch of thumbs up. What's up, dude? Brand lived. Mama bear? Eek. Oh, baby. I wish I had that other battle or the other blood gems now, but obviously we didn't know that before we got Agam. Hmm. Seems good enough to take, doesn't it? To put the Sneed's body with the module.
I mean, I'm pretty excited for that turn basically being a 2-2 AoE buff, but I'm still pretty excited about that turn. <laughs> Not gonna lie. That's uh, the core to actually have a win condition now. Sneed stats justify it. I agree. We have Primal Thin. That's a big hit here. We have anything that generates blood gems, especially as battle cries. We have anything that could triple potentially. I'm not going to freeze for like another Sneeds. Arm doing a lot of work. Yeah, it's helping. It's helping. I view this as like the, the most temporary of minions. Okay, arm is probably the most temporary, but then Peggle. So I want these things to get the buffs over this. I'm really talking of the taunted minions, which one is the most likely to go? If that's the case, we want to put it up further. Plus we get potential Peggle value. Farm. You have been warned. The farm. Yeah, you guys hit him a few times. You tell him. Sneed's in the back. No, I want its death rattle to go early so that it can attack and then more attacks go into our taunts. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Toxfin. Probably? It's a big ass minion. Doesn't mean I shouldn't take it. Looks like blood gems to me. I really should have rolled with the coin instead of selling off the Toxfin there. I really should have rolled with the coin with the Toxfin in hand to make a decision on the next board. I'm not gonna freak out too much about it, but it was definitely better. Pulling Hydra back this far is a little scary, but it is a Quillbore board. We know one of his cool bores is a, a banner bore though. So we should still bump. Yo, Dennis. Bofer love Bofer love Bofer Clover. <laughs> Yo, Dennis. Thank you for the kind words, man. Like, I appreciate you. Thank you so much for all the support. Farm, you little shit. Sorry, I'm, I'm raging over my my world's worst corner cleaving Hydra. And I appreciate you. Thank you for, for everything. What? Why? It's Brand turned the corner after dodging an 86% lethal. What a guy. I think I take the selfless and we just use it to murder him. I don't know about that. We can buy a battle cry on the next two boards. Alright, we can buy a selfless. <laughs> oh man. Agamagan's not very good. It dilutes the buffs to the Hydra, and all it does is give this an extra 1-1. One, one. Honestly, we're, we're a lot stronger than him. Or at least that's my read, is that we're a lot stronger than him. And if that's the case, then I'm going to play for getting another board buff or something that's actually useful for future turns. When it's down to the last gold, though, keeping a thorn caller generates a 1-1 one, one buff for next turn. Selfless Hero is a significantly better minion for the turn. It's not worth the risk. 
Threatening a Hydra with a farm sounds counterproductive. It'll probably enjoy it there, having an easy source of food and all that. It's like when your parents said that your pet rabbit, when you were a kid, went to the farm. The Hydra knows what I mean. It's the Indian intonation to circle back on yesterday's conversation. You mean Hoppy didn't actually go to a farm? Yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> on Christmas Eve, he's suddenly on the table. That's a cruel childhood you had there, Dennis. I'm, I'm pretty confident I never ate a uh, a pet. Goldfish die occasionally. Rabbits die. What's the name of this innovative comp? It's called uh, The Game Gave Us This. Pog Champ. I made this. You made this? I made this. Hey, look at the perfect gold. It's almost like nothing happened this turn. Shh. We didn't just cycle our entire hand and end up with the same thing on the board at the end. Plus like 40, 40 stats. Nothing's changed. The more things change, the more they stay the same. Yo, Yazadi. Thank you for the follow. Welcome to Bofus Gophers. Also, beefier before. I remember chuckling at your name. And then, uh, apparently I never said, yo, thanks for the follow. Beefier. Uh, Lotor for the win. Lord of the Rings follows the Bofur? seems only too fitting. Thanks for the follow as well. Welcome to Bofus Gophers. Other Bran is scaring me. What if he has Amalgadons? Then he beats us. He had to dodge an 84% rate to get to this point. His line? Not great. Did he get lucky enough to maybe scam his way to a win? Possibly. Let's find out on the next Go for Ball Z. If it happens, it happens. I don't regret our play. It's all we can control. Oh, we didn't have the ultimate brand matchup at the end. He was weaker than that three turns later. He can't be that big, right? The brand couldn't have been that big. He just got lucky enough to get to here. Um, that's probably a ghoul, right? I know they had the brand for the battle cries. A little arguable there. And just dump this in the back for the tie break. Then meh. Sure, we'll keep it. Roll? Is, you think we should roll, chat? Should we roll? You think we should roll? We need an emote that just says roll question mark. That's what we really need. That's the, the emote that's missing in this channel. Roll. <laughs> Should we roll? I think we should roll. Roll? Tip? Indeed. We'll get there. Get the order right first. He does have his Amalgadon. Right here. Not to the farm! You did it! You beautiful! Beautiful. 
Minion. Thank you. Ty. <laughs> Unbelievable. We hit poorly at the end, unfortunately. Still. Still okay. Ty. Um, Spore is not going to work. Into the game, right? Probably like this. Plays around Cleave a little bit better, and on top of that, we want this to reliably cleave. We don't care if it gets shielded in cleaves, because it will die before it gets to cleave again. that up slightly with the way this his uh, stats are I'd rather this thing kill one of the taunts pretty good he pivoted we pivoted and um, we come out a little better probably oh great hit oh my god you're just you're, I'm never threatening you with the farm you're the best good job Hydra well played you learned your lesson now you can go graze on a farm or something for real. All right, 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 all right. Good turnaround. Got a couple wins. Roll? <laughs> Should we roll, chat? <laughs> I hide your cleaved right both times at the end. Now it was kind of irrelevant after his first cleave there, but the first time actually did matter.